Well, Frank Owen is a business development manager at the submarine systems company Sonar Tech Atlas, and he joins us live now from the Australian capital, Canberra. Frank, thanks for your time today. First of all, did you feel this outcome was inevitable? Well, I, I, I guess I did. Um, I always held up some hope that um, things would come to a nice conclusion. I actually um, had some contact with uh, a, a colleague um, who got me up to date and said, oh, there's some other information, but I can't, I'm not at liberty to uh, provide that to you at the moment. And I'm, I realise now that that was the fact that the US Navy was pretty sure, but needed to get that physical evidence um, by, by having the deep diving ROV in the water um, to actually observe, find the wreckage. Frank, what did you make of those reports that safety concerns have been raised before about this vessel? Well, this is starting to ring some alarm bells with me. Um, uh, the uh, approach to safety um, seems occasionally to be tedious, but it's a it's a absolutely vital, particularly when you're operating at depths like this, where the pressure is just so great. Can I ask, given your knowledge and understanding of submarines, would you personally have got on that submersible on Sunday if you had been offered a chance? I would have had, um, <laughs> I guess this was going to be tempered by hindsight, but um, everything I've seen of it, and I've now seen a lot of, of course, of this submersible, says to me it's a very, very basic um, system, and um, I would be wondering what what the backup systems were, what the alternative systems were. Even the colour of it is, um, uh, and this is not just on reflection, but the fact that um, when you're looking for something near the waves, and the waves often are white, um, to have it painted white um, suggests that you're not you, you're going to have difficulty finding it. Frank, Things do you that think stick out. will this tragedy spell the end for tourism of this kind? Do you think? Uh, well, I'm not sure. The, um, there's four submersibles that can go to this depth, and three of them are um, certified in the normal way. And the certification is not a legal requirement. It's, um, it's undertaken as a risk reduction measure by those corporations that have uh, corporate social responsibility policies and so on, and have responsibility not to lose money so, for example, the uh, offshore oil and gas industry um, requires that when they, before they put people in the water, they have every single contingency covered with backup systems and secondary systems and, um, and, every, um, and, and this independent review of it by organisations such as Detnoski Veritas, ABS, Lloyds, etc. Do you feel we will see more regulation now as a result of this tragedy? Well, uh, you might, but the, the problem with regulation is it needs to be enforced by some sort of ju jurisdictional authority. And if you're operating in the territorial waters of a nation, then that nation is quite at liberty to impose its rules. But when you're operating on the high seas, even if you're in the maritime search and rescue area, um, of the United States and Canada as this is, um, you're, at, you're only in their search and rescue area. You're not in the area um, that is their territorial, or you're not even in, the, in their exclusive economic zone. Um, so it's, uh, it's very difficult to, um, to legislate and to enforce rules. All you can do is hope that the market says, I'm not going to take a trip on a vehicle that has not been, or a vessel that has not been um, thoroughly re reviewed by um, an independent authority that can also um, attest to its safety against their own set of rules which have been developed through experience. Frank Owen from Sonar Tech Atlas in Canberra in Australia. Thanks for your expertise this morning, really appreciate it. No problem at all, thank you.